Kelly with Geek Inked, and we're here with best-selling author R.A. Salvatore and his equally talented son, Gino. Um, Bob, if J.R.R. Tolkien is famous for make, making the elves and dwarves more popular, the same could be said for your popularizing the drow. How do you feel about that? Well, it, uh, mixed feelings. One, I think it's pretty awesome that, you know, I, I go play like World of Warcraft and I see versions of my Dark Elf characters running by me all the time. But on the other hand, I feel like I, I, I kind of contributed to ruining the best monster Dungeons and Dragons ever had. Um, so mixed feelings. But no, it, it's actually really, it's really amazing. And now more and more I go to conventions like this one up here at Halcon and I see Dark Elves walking around. That's very cool. That's very cool. Uh, is it true you had a cat named Guinevere, and if so, which came first, the cat or the panther? Uh, the panther came first, and yes, it's true, and we had her for about 18, 19 years before she just, we lost her, unfortunately, but she had a great life. Yeah. You've also written a couple of Star Wars novels, the first of which gained some notoriety for having killed Chewbacca. We understand that's not your fault. How did that come about? Well, basically, um, Del Rey, I was working with Del Rey on my Demon Wars books at the time. And they had this big bidding war with Bantam for the license for Star Wars books right before the, the movies, the new movies came out. And um, they, they won the license. They asked me if I would do the first book in their New Jedi Order series. And the other publishers that had me on deadlines agreed that it would be a good thing. Go ahead and do it. So I agreed. And they took me out there and they told me about this new menace coming to the galaxy far, far away, the Yuzhan Vong and all this stuff. And here is the arc of the story and I was supposed to take it to here. And so I went back and I came up with an outline for the book and I turned it in and was on a conference call with Del Rey and Lucasfilm. And they said, oh, this is great. This is just what we wanted. But didn't anyone tell you? What? You have to kill Chewbacca. And I was like, Send me, I'm sending back your money. I, I didn't want anything to do with it. And it, it was about, a, we were running out of time, but it was about a two-week process. They finally convinced me to do it. And I said, okay, but I have to do it my way. And they said, okay. And... Um, I did it, still getting hate mail for it. Death threats have calmed down anyway. Um, and I still regret it. Now I've, I've actually come to regret it. And not because of the response. Well, kind of because of the response. Not because of the anger directed toward me, but more because it really hurt a lot of people, I think. And, uh, you know, it came from on high, though. It's his galaxy. If, if they want him, they want the Wookiee gone, the Wookiee's gone. Yeah. Gino, growing up in a literary family, how did that inspire you to become a writer? Well, uh, watching him work, watching him write for forever was, it was never something I wanted to be my career. It was never my goal, but at the same time, it meant I was reading all the time and I was writing all the time because it was a great outlet for me. And then when the opportunity came to actually do something, to actually write something for publication, I took it and I haven't looked back. It was never intentional and it was never, I never watched him and said, that's what I want to do, but it also prepared me for when the opportunity arose. So I, I don't regret it, certainly. What was it like working on Stone of Timora with your father? It was surprisingly easy. Um, he's got 50 some odd novels under his belt. I at the time had zero and there could have been a lot of ego if he had any, uh, getting in the way, but he didn't. He completely stepped back and let me do my thing and then did his part with it. And it was, my voice writing has been very much influenced by him, unsurprisingly, considering I've read every book he's ever written, most of them before publication and all of them more than once. Uh, so our voices melded in a way that worked really well. It didn't feel, sometimes if you are co-writing a book, it can be very jarring from one person's passage to the other person's. and it wasn't. Uh, the big thing was pacing. My pacing was not the same as his, but we obviously deferred to his pacing because we're writing for his audience, and after all, he has an audience. Uh, mine is My only... Name is first on the book. Yeah, his name is, his name is first on the book. So. Uh, have you ever considered branching it in something other than fantasy? Yes, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> not that I don't love fantasy, but I also like so much more than just fantasy. And... Uh, I feel like my next several projects that I do will probably be outside of fantasy. Then again, they also may never be published because I don't have any sort of publishing deals. I am working on several things, all of it on spec, uh, including a novel potentially, and then I'm also working on writing for the screen. My goal is to become a screenwriter. So. I think it would be more accurate to say Gino reached out into fantasy than the other way around. 
Um, do you guys play D and D together? Yep. <laughs> yeah, we we've been. I ran the first D and D game for Gino and his brother and a couple of their friends, The Caves of Chaos, and um, we still play. Uh, we we haven't played this summer. It's been a busy summer, but. Um, and depending on which who's DMing, if it's Gino's brother, we play fourth edition. If I'm DMing, we play first edition still. And um, yeah, yeah, I, I have fun killing my kids. We have we have quite a group. I have my group. The core of my D and D group has been together for 20 plus years. Uh, we've lost a few people, moved away. My brother passed away. His kids are now playing. My kids are now playing. It's pretty cool. There are a lot of geeks out there who have uh, body art inspired by Forgotten Realms novels, especially of Drist. How do you feel about that? <laughs> it freaks me out. <laughs> now, I've actually signed a couple of tattoos, and people have had my name <laughs> tattooed on their legs, and it's, it's really, it, it, it's pretty awesome, actually. I, I met a soldier this summer who had, his leg had been, uh, his back had been seriously scarred, and he's tattooed over the scarring. With the drits. It, it, it blows. I'm still amazed anyone reads the books, okay? Let's start with that, okay? Um, and when you work from there, it, it, it kind of blows my mind. I see people have drits tattoos on their legs or on their backs or whatever, on shoulders, whatever. It's, it, I, I think it's awesome. Just like when I see characters in video games based on my characters. It's, it's, um, it, I don't, it's humbling. It's scary. It's weird. Um, but it's all fun. So, and that's the whole point. Um, uh, if we were to put out a call to people uh, on our blog to uh, submit their uh, tattoos inspired by your work, would you be interested in seeing that? Certainly. I've, whenever somebody sends me a picture, oh, I got this new Dritz tattoo, I say, put it on my Facebook page. Because I've got, the, my wife started this Facebook page for me. Another thing blows my mind. It's like 110,000 people on my Facebook page, which, whoa. Um, but, um, they always put them up on the Facebook page, which is really cool. And then you come to conventions and you see Dritz work. I just saw Dritz last night in the restaurant. <laughs> I love it. It's awesome. Do either of you have uh, any tattoos yourself? I have three. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. I, I have three and plans to get several more, but just three for now. Maybe we'll try and get a couple shots of that. Uh, other than... Uh, <laughs> other than book four in the Neverwinter series coming out in 2013, do you have any other projects you'd like to talk about? Do you have anything you want to talk, talk about those comics? Um, so we recently put out a five-volume uh, graphic novel called The Legend of Dritz, Neverwinter Tales. It's independent from the books, but plays off of some of the events that happen in the books. Uh, it does include Dritz. It is a lot of fun. just came out in hardback form. And we have another five issue series this is through IDW uh, we have another five issue series uh, in the works um, nearly done on our end we'll, yeah. so we're, we're yeah, hoping I, to see that soon and the last threshold comes out in March that's the fourth book in Neverwinter and then next year Wizards of the Coast just announced something called The Sundering which is basically fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons is coming it will have huge implications on the world when they did fourth edition they basically brought us into a room after we had been given the here's what's going to happen to the world you're going to love it um, and we, there were, wasn't a lot of love in some corners. But anyway, this is this time, and I think because of what happened with fourth edition, in the disconnect between the authors and the and the changes, they said, "Okay, here's what we're doing to the game. What do you think would happen to the world? How can we, you know?" And they asked the authors. So we had this big summit up at Wizards of the Coast, and I was there with Ed Greenwood. And Paul Kemp was, and Aaron Evans were on the phone. They couldn't come out. But Richard Lee Byers and Troy Denning, the old Troy Denning from, from the original realms, was there. And we sat down with the team at Wizards, and we came up with a thing called The Sundering. And I'm writing, it's a six-book series, but they're, each of us are doing, it's the same meta story that's going on in the background, but each of us are doing what's going on with our characters that we're using in these books. So we're not like following each other's storyline or using characters together. But I'm doing the first one, and then you have the other, uh, I, don't, I don't know the exact order, but Aaron, Richard, Lee Byers, um, Troy Denning, and Paul Kemp, and then Ed Greenwood's doing the last one. And so basically, my book comes out next August. It's called The Companions. And then after that, there'll be two a year from me in the realms for the next couple of years. Thank you both so much for your time. Who wants no